What's up everybody? So in this video we're going to be talking all about protein synthesis or maybe otherwise known by you as transcription and translation. This is a really really high yield topic, always pops up, so let's just get started. So remember, 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 protein synthesis or transcription and translation is basically the two steps from which your body makes proteins. The two steps how your body makes proteins. Now, I want to start off with a really nice, really cool analogy that while you're picking your test, uh, picking your nose on the test, you can remember this story and maybe it will help you remember transcription and translation. So I like to call it the Bob the Builder story. It's real simple. We got here Bob the Builder, right? We know Bob the Builder loves to build things, right? Now, let's say he comes up with this crazy idea to build a rocket. Now, what do you need to build something? You need instruction manual, right? So Bob the Builder knows that. Of course, he's smart. So he goes up, he goes into his house, he goes to the library, right? Because it's got this big yellow book that has the instructions on building absolutely anything you need. So he goes there, but unfortunately, he can't get in. It's staff only. Uh, he can't go in there. No way. But he just needs one page from this book. He needs the one page that can build this, that can tell him how to build this rocket. So he asks his dad or whatever, or the staff in there, oh, please, just please help me photocopy the, the page that I need and slip it to me under the door. Because maybe right now he can't give me this book as uh, staff only or whatever, but please. So what they do is they take that book to the photocopy machine and they copy the page he needs. And so they give him that page, they slip it under the door. Now he's got it. Now Bob the Builder has the instruction manual on how to build this rocket. And he's got all his tools and all that stuff to build this rocket. Now what else does he need? One more thing, right? He needs what? He needs materials. So what does he do? He heads to the garage because the garage has all of these raw materials to help him build this rocket. He's got now the three things he needs. Himself, all the tools, He's got the instruction manual and he's got his raw materials. With this, he goes and he builds this rocket. So why did I tell you this? Again, because this is the perfect analogy to help you remember transcription and translation and you'll see exactly why. So let's summarize real quick this analogy. So it starts, starts off with a book, right? The instruction manuals. Unfortunately, we don't need the whole instruction manual to for how to build everything to build this rocket. We just need the one page that's gonna tell us how to do it. So we go and we photocopy that specific page that we need. Now that we have that page, we can use our raw materials and our tools to build this rocket, right? That is it, that's our analogy. So how does this relate to real protein synthesis, man? How does it, why'd you just tell me this? Let me show you why. Here is our Bob the Builder analogy, right? Now let's look at the real process. The real process of transcription and translation is what? It's using our DNA, reading our DNA, and building whatever protein it's asking for. Let me show you what I mean. So we have our DNA. This re is represented by the instruction manual. It has the code on all the proteins that our body needs, right? Because our DNA codes for our proteins, right? We, our body, our cells can make so many different kinds of proteins because we have so many different codes. One code will be for one kind of protein, one gene will be for another kind of protein, this other gene will be for another kind of protein, but this whole, this yellow book, this DNA has all the code for all our proteins. But, right, at any given moment, we just need to make one protein for a specific purpose. So let's say, we then what's going to happen is we're going to use this little photocopy machine called RNA polymerase. And don't worry, we're going to see this whole process in detail just now. I'm just trying to give you the big picture here. So our body, will, our cells will use this little enzyme called RNA polymerase, like the photocopy machine. And it's going to copy the piece of DNA, the gene that we, the sp a specific piece of gene that we need for the specific protein we're trying to make. So we copy it into mRNA. Now this little, like, like the little paper, right? And now this all happens inside our nucleus, just like this process happened in the library. Now that we have this small instruction manual on the protein we need, we can use our ribosome and our tRNA. Our tRNA is like the raw materials and our ribosome is like Bob the Builder, the guy who's gonna build everything. So the ribosome and the tRNA will read this little mRNA and build our final protein. And this all happens in the cytoplasm, just like um, this part here happened in the garage. So you can see the first part here happening in the nucleus 
is transcription. And this whole second part, turning that little photocopy into the final protein, is translation. So that is the big overview of transcription and translation. So if you're sitting there in class, picking your nose, seeing you have 10 minutes left and you don't know what transcription and translation is, think of our Bob the Builder story. It will help you. It will trust me, it will help you. This is especially important you know, in that final exam in two years and you have so many things to remember. This will help you remember transcription and translation. Okay, awesome. Don't worry, we're gonna go into all of this in detail now for what you need to know. I just wanna uh, hope you can get this big picture. So now, I have a question for you. Do all your genes get expressed all the time? So what is genes, first of all? So we know inside your nucleus you have DNA, right? Your instruction manual, your genetic code. Now, a segment of that DNA is called a gene. So one gene will, will, will code for one protein, another segment of the DNA called another gene will code for another protein, right? So you have many genes. Now, do all of your genes get expressed all the time? What does expressed mean? Expressed means, does this gene get turned into a protein all the time? So expressed basically means turned into, it turned into a protein, okay? Does it get read and turn into a protein? So do all your genes get read and turned into a protein all the time? The answer is no. So you have so many genes, but at any given moment, you may only need some of them, okay? So some of these genes can be turned on when they're needed, and the other ones will be off in the meanwhile. So not all your genes are expressed at the same time, only when they're needed. So for example, let's say we have here Bear girls, right? And he's gonna go and, um, you know, do his wild things in nature, and he's going, he cuts his hand. So what we ultimately wanna do is stop the bleeding. So let's say at this moment, he wants to make a protein, his, his cells needs to make a protein that's gonna help him stop this bleeding. So we're gonna go, right? He has a specific gene somewhere that's gonna make a protein. So his body is gonna do transcription and translation for that specific gene to make a protein, right? Remember, proteins are made up of a sequence of amino acids. If you don't know that, just make sure you watch the protein video. It's made up of a sequence of this amino acid. And the sequence of, for this protein is coded for by that specific gene. So this gene is for a protein that's gonna help him stop bleeding. So your body is gonna do transcription and translation to turn that, uh, to make that protein that the gene is asking for, right? So ultimately, finally, you've made that protein and now the bleeding will stop, okay? So this is one example of a scenario where a specific gene is turned on and transcribed and translated into a protein. So you don't, not all of your genes are expressed all the time, okay? So only at certain circumstances when they're needed. Otherwise, it'd be crazy. Otherwise, you'd make so many things at once, your body would just get overwhelmed, okay? So make sure you understand this idea. Some genes are turned on and some are turned off, okay? When they're needed, they can be turned on. When they're not needed, they're turned off. Make sure you understand this concept. Awesome. So now, let's get into the nitty-gritty details that you need to know, okay? First, we're going to start with transcription. So transcription, where does transcription happen? Remember, very important, transcription happens inside your nucleus because that's where your DNA is, remember? That's where the big yellow book is of the Bob the Builder story. That's where the instruction manual is, all the code for all your proteins, right? So transcription is gonna be copying the specific segment that we need to make this protein. That's what transcription is. Remember, happens in the nucleus, and this is transcription, the process of copying a segment or a gene of DNA into mRNA because our DNA is too big. This whole book is too big to leave the nucleus. But this small mRNA that we copy, the specific segment that we need, is small enough to leave the nucleus, okay, into the cytoplasm where translation is going to happen, okay? So now, how does it start? So here we have, let's say this is the gene we want to transcribe. So here we have it. So first we need to open, uncoil this DNA. Because right now, if it's all wound up and super coiled like this, it's so hard for any of the enzymes and molecules to help copy this because it's all, it's all hidden inside this coiled up version, right? So we need to uncoil it. So there's a little enzyme, which does a lot of things in transcription translation, called RNA polymerase. Okay, it has this little name, RNA polymerase.
For access to our full-length premium videos and so much more, head over to teachme.org now.